So today is some suspension upgrades on the CRX. You guys have been watching lately. So I finished up the seat in last week's video for that, the front subframe. It's kind of cool with those extended lower ball joints, it naturally brings the front end down a little bit. You have to go in there and make some adjustments to your suspension. That's one thing that we're going to do today. First off, I talked about some new bushings and bearings. Where are you going with the spherical setup for rear trailing arms? These are the compensator slash toe arms. These are the front upper control arm bushings. We're replacing all those to spherical today. And we are going to put on a new set of coilovers. I chose the S3 coilovers. These have a swift spring. They have a 14 front and 10K rear spring rate. Really nice setup. A lot of people out in Cali that I follow have been running them. Something I wanted to test out. Seemed to be a, definitely a great setup for track use. And we're going to pull off the max speed rods from the CRX today. Here I'm going to move my old hatchback forward. I have some Skunk 2 spherical front LCAs I want to throw on the car, try to get a full spherical suspension on the CRX. Chris was over this day and it was a huge help. It saved me probably a solid two hours. As he pulled off the suspension on one side, I did the other side for the CRX. Pretty straightforward here. Moving the coil over and then upper, contra upper control arm. You don't need to remove it from the knuckle itself. We're just getting it loose so we can spin it around and get the PCI bushings installed. PCI bushings require you to check the clearance on your upper control arms. What I'm doing here is just grinding down a little bit more room to make sure those bushings do not contact the upper control arm when it flexes. So I choose my grinder, clear up a little more room, make sure those fit properly. It is included in the instructions. It mentions to do that if you're using aftermarket upper control arms. I would check regardless if you're using any sort of upper control arm that's an aftermarket one. Here I had a little trouble getting installed. I tightened them before installing them. So what I did here is just remove them, loosen them up, it made it a lot easier to slide into position, and then tighten them when they were back installed on the car. Here we're just finishing up the passenger side. Chris needed help with the ball joint. Didn't want to damage the buddy club ball joint, so he let me get that one removed. There's a new upper control arm bushings installed. Got the energy suspension with the stock LC8 out. Here we're just gonna start removing the parts off of the old Civic. I've kind of made up my mind. I think I'm gonna go ahead and sell this car. I've been taking parts off of it already. I took off the 1320 header put that on the CRX. Here we're, we're gonna remove the Coney's, uh, Coney shocks with the uh, coilovers they have on it. We're taking off the Skunk 2 lower control arms. Those lower control arms are brand new. I installed them maybe a year, year and a half ago with the intention of keeping this car on the road. But as it's been sitting, I just feel like I've been wanting to get rid of it. I'm gonna put it back to stock. Probably put a sock ZC in it, back to OBD0. Still has all the heater components all of the interior, the carpet, all I need to do is put the rear seats in and it's essentially a stock vehicle again. So I'm gonna sell it to a close friend. He's gonna use it for like a daily, maybe just something to have a little fun with. 
Here's a look at those Skunk 2 spherical LCAs. I'm finally gonna put those to use. We took off the Innovative bar and we're comparing it to the Max Speedy Rods bar and they look identical in the way that they're constructed. I think Max Speedy Rods may have used that as their template. Solid bar. Uh, I took that bar off the CRX. I put on that innovative competition bar that I had sitting around. So I'm gonna put the Max Speedy Rods on here along with the coilovers from the CRX. That way the new owner can have a couple little mods in case he does want to keep adding more parts to it. Doing this work is kind of simple. It's just time consuming. I'm so glad I did have the help that day because suspension work can just be, it can be a bore, honestly, doing it over and over. So it was really great that Chris gave me a hand. Got that knocked out quickly and a lot faster than I thought. Here we rolled over one of the buddy clubs onto Chris's CRX. I just thought it'd be kind of cool. The blue on blue would actually probably look pretty tight. He likes the white wheels. I'm not sure what he'll do in the future. We just thought we'd test it out. Now we just need to put all this back on, get everything reinstalled and get this thing on the ground and we can start working on the rear with the trailing arms, get those removed, get those PCI bushings installed there also. I think putting stuff back together generally takes a little bit longer than always pulling it apart. Pulling it apart always seems to go really, really fast. Excited to see how these coilovers feel when we get the suspension finished up. I'm gonna get the car lined. Also going to uh, adjust the, usually when you put coilovers on, you need to adjust it. It's kind of low in certain areas, might be too high. So I'll get that adjusted, get it aligned. And with all the spherical stuff, I'm curious to see how it'll feel on track. I'm hoping it has a little bit better response. Now I'm gonna work on the rear. Chris is getting ready to leave. He was over, we ended up fixing an exhaust hanger on his car and then fixing his shifter. He's getting ready to head out, so I'm gonna continue working on the rear. Easiest way I thought to do this was just to remove the rear trailing arm. Get it completely off the car. I don't see how I could have put the PCI bushings in with the, tr the trailing arm still attached to the control arm and the upper control arm. So with that off, I needed to take off the compensator arm and then get that energy suspension bushing pressed out. I was trying with the screwdriver at first, but that wasn't working at all. Decided I'd use my bearing press kit and that made it a cinch. Just put that on there, put a longer sleeve in the back that I slid into, got my impact gun out and just pushed that bushing right through. Made it very simple to get it removed and then just hammer the sleeve out. And then PCI says that with the offset bushing, the trailing arm might contact the body. So instead of hammering at the body, I grinded down the little lip on the inside of the trailing arm. That way there's a little more clearance there and you'll see in a moment when I have it installed, probably like half inch clearance. I think that's more than enough for what's needed. And with that bushing, you just need to drill a couple holes to get the trailing arm bushing mounted. If you're, the thing that's cool about these bushings, if you're using the 9093 Integra, it has a larger diameter hole. It comes with a supply template, so you can still use this smaller diameter bushing on it. So it works on all of the, the older Golden Area Integras and Civics. Just a quick look at it installed. It has lock washers on the backside. And we'll throw that one back on. I didn't really show the compensator arms. Those are so easy to install. All you gotta do is push the bushings in and when I have the arm on, I bolted it up 
right there. So those are really easy to install. I figured the trailing out ones would be the ones a little bit more difficult to record that. I did uh, install some password JDM ones like four or five years ago. I'll link that video up here in the top right corner. That does show you how to just install some compensator arms while everything is still on the car. And while I was installing it, I had forgotten to put the coilover on, so I had to drop the arm again. And then reinstall the coilover. Just finish buttoning up the rest, get that caliper back on, e-brake line, anything else that needs to be tightened up. And there's a look. Toe arms and rear trailing arm bushings and those S3 coilovers now installed on the rear. Alright, that finishes up all the time lapse. Let's take a look. And that'll finish up the suspension. The coilovers are maxed out. They look like they were all spun down all the way. So we're looking at a slammed ride height in the rear. The front isn't as low, but still, still, still sitting pretty low. Just gonna move the car back and forth a little bit over this little lip on my garage, kind of shake the suspension around a few times, and then I'll go ahead and get that adjusted to where I like it. Probably a little bit, maybe like half inch higher than this, so it's sitting on top of the tire a little bit. It's where I like to ride, just for clearance issues, and also just handling. I feel like it's too low, then it just naturally is gonna handle a little worse, but looks dope, look how so it's tucking tire all crazy on this side, so I might have to go up a little higher for the passenger rear. After finishing all of that suspension work, got a few parts left over that I think I can put to use. Sway bar, I think I'll take it somewhere and have it powder coated so it's nice and fresh. And either put it on the, the Tahitian Green Pearl or the Y49. Same with the innovative traction bar. Probably, that'll probably just clean up. It just uh, it's just dirty and dusty. I think cleaning it up, maybe maybe touch it up with black here. Put that probably on the Y49. The Tahitian green hatch already has that exact bar. The Coney's with the 550 front, 500 rear. I may end up putting these on the Y49 and Ditchy and the Tokikos with the Skunk 2 coilovers because these ride phenomenally better. And Coney's are always rebuildable. I just like that. They're a really, really nice shock to begin with. And then the compensator arms, I'll probably clean those up, put them on the Type R. It could use some new bushings. I'd like to continually add all urethane bushings to that car. And then the DA energy suspension. I don't actually need those. All my cars are equipped, so I think I'm just going to throw those up for sale. Pretty cheap. And like I said, with the white hatch, as I was talking about earlier in the voiceover, I think my heart tells me to let it go, sell it. I'm gonna put it back to stock and I've already done so with the front end already. It has a, essentially just stock parts on there again, except for the max speed and rod coilers and traction bar, but I think I'm gonna put that back to stock, sell it, and eventually buy another project in the future. Nothing soon, I don't have enough time to be working on a ton of different projects. So I want to keep this my main focus for my track build for now, just because it's running well. And I'm able to get a lot of those parts installed and hopefully it just uh, keeps performing a little better. And I just really enjoy driving it. I don't, uh, I don't think there's a lot more I can really do for suspension. Maybe uh, work on the engine bay, a couple other things for cleaning it up and I want to make it look a little bit nicer now again soon. I think I'm going to tackle that in my next video. I have the 9091 moldings. I also, I think I want to cut my rear bumper. 
That way, uh, like kind of like a track bumper. I have a spare already, and this one is a little, this one's a little bit rough to begin with, and the mufflers kind of melty in it right here. So I think I'm gonna cut it, and then also paint whatever molding pieces black again, and then same with the trim. But that might be my next video, and just make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Thanks for taking a look today, guys. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you soon.